This is Road to the Golden Door, where we unpack the proven success formula straight from the minds of Golden Door winners, uncovering the motivation, methods, and the mindset it takes to become an elite performer in door-to-door -door sales and in life. This is Road to the Golden Door. Now, here's your host, Mikey Lucas. What's up? Welcome back, Road to the Golden Door. I've got a uh, another really special guest for you guys today. Very excited about this one. Been been uh, hunting this young man down for really the last couple of years, uh, <laughs> trying to get in front of him. And I'm very excited to have Cody Olive on. He's a five time Golden Door Award winner, held multiple awards in the industry. I'm gonna let him tell you what they are. He's sold over a thousand accounts four times. His 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 record for accounts sold in one year is one thousand seven hundred and twenty eight accounts pest control accounts in a year. That is absolutely wild. He has hit Golden Door every single year he has been in the door to door space. You want to talk about a goat? This kid is the goat. Cody Olive, what up, brother? Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me on, Mikey. I appreciate it, man. Excited to be here. Looking forward to it, man. Looking forward to it. Cool, man. So, um, Cody, for everyone, uh, uh, everyone that doesn't know you, um, who is Cody Olive? Yeah, so originally from Southern California, went to BYU here in Provo, Utah. Actually, was not interested in the door-to-door -door space at the time. Was one of the classic internship guys. Always wanted to go to law school. I ended up working in uh, Goldman Sachs uh, in Salt Lake, New Jersey. So I had a little bit of corporate America experience. Ended up serving a two-year LDS mission later in life. I went 24 to 26. And then when I got back, it was kind of, you know, you're on your own. So good luck figuring out how to pay for law school. So I gravitated towards door-to-door. -door, had a good friend in Josh Nielsen. Um, and they were over there at Green X. And so got into door-to-door -door in 2019. I went to Philly. We sold 1,004 accounts. Got my first golden door. 2020, I um, got with Ben Egan and Josh. And we went to Chicago. Sold 1,728 accounts. Uh, Seeger has since beaten my revenue record, but uh, still got the accounts record. 2021, went to Milwaukee, uh, did 551K in revenue, got a golden door. And then 2022, went to Omaha, did a million, uh, 1,014 accounts, got a golden door. And then this last year, went to Jersey, did golden door, a million, 1,010 accounts. And so we're here building up the grit and uh, we're ready to take this thing to the moon. Love it, dude. So you're at the grit marketing. Um, yep. Tell me how that experience has been. So a lot of guys... Um, if you don't know who the grit marketing is, they, uh, they are my only competition when it comes to my mastermind and creating golden <laughs> door award winners. And I was like, dude, I'm going to beat, I'm going to have the most golden door award winners in my organization and not have a door to door company. I had a coaching program and I go to door to door con last year and I'm like, oh shoot. I think you guys have like 14 guys. I had nine. Yep. I was like, gosh, dang it. Uh, I should have said solar because I would have won, but I said the entire industry, so I got a little <laughs> bit let down there. So, um, And I said, I'm going to come back with vengeance. And I'm going to put 25 guys on stage, and you guys have like 50 already. So I'm, I got beat again, uh, which is going to be a little bit of a healthy competition. I'm going to have to call John Taylor out on stage and be like, I'm going to beat you next year. I'm going to have 100 guys. Good luck. <laughs> yep. but, uh, tell, me, tell me a little bit about the grit. Um, what, uh, just tell me a little about your experience there. Obviously, you know, you, you've hit Golden Door every single year. Um, I know there's a lot of companies that don't even have one Golden Door award winner. And uh, you guys have consistently created uh, 10, 15, 20, now over 40 Golden Door award winners. And I don't care what anybody says, uh, especially the haters. I love haters. Um, you know, everyone's going to say the grit cheated or whatever, or fluffing numbers. It's like, yeah, well, uh, you guys don't even have one. So good luck. Maybe you should start lying, I guess. Um, tell me about, <laughs> tell me about your experience with the grit, um, and, uh, how that's been. Yeah. Well, actually our results are verified by good old Sam Taggart at Dorder Direct for it. So we have verified results, but honestly it's, it's been a plus. I got back from LDS mission and was looking for a good experience with people I could trust and my whole mindset. I mean, playing high school sports and especially playing baseball down in Southern California, it's like, well, if I want to hit like Alex Rodriguez, like I want to be trained by Alex Rodriguez, or if I want to play like Mike Trout, I want to be trained by Mike Trout. And at that time it was like John Taylor had just done a thousand accounts. You know, Bob Nielsen was this big cafe Rio business guy and they were running green X. 
And I was like, you know what, I'll, I'll attach my, my train to that caboose. And so then that way we can see what we make of it. And honestly, it's like, I'm a huge Michael Jordan fan. And I literally think of, you know, Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen and Dennis Rodman. And it's like, if those guys would have been together from, you know, 1990 to like 2002, I literally think they probably would have gone at least eight for 12, nine for 12 until Shaq and Kobe took over. And so it's like, if you're not a sports fan, it's, it's imagine just like you and your best friends that push each other and motivate each other. And there's no backbiting or toxicity because, you know, we have things in place like standardized pay. We have good checks and balances in play. And it's essentially just running it back for championship after championship where it's like this year we had 37 golden doors. And, you know, there's no doubt in my mind this summer, we don't have at least 50 or 60. So needless to say it, it's been a plus and then honestly some of my best friends in life because i got into this when i was 26 but it's like i got married in 2021 and literally easton bunker who's my main manager he was the reverend that civilly married my wife and i and then you know ben egan one of the owners he was a groomsman at my wedding so it's like from social to spiritual to financial success it's it's been nothing short of amazing love that yeah this is a uh this is slowly becoming the grits podcast because you guys have so many guys. Um, I, I am sure I'm going to get some flag for, okay, when are you going to have other people? I'm like, I don't know. When are you going to hit a golden door? Um, I'm just trying to interview the top talent here. And uh, every one of them seems to have uh, something that I'm learning personally. So, um, yeah. you know, I, it was funny. I wanted to say that at the beginning of the show, welcome to road to the grit uh, golden door podcast. <laughs> um, we'll get you, we'll get you all the swag, Mikey. I know. Right. Um, the uh, funny, do you remember last year at Door Door Con when I, I pushed John Taylor away and I was like, give me a picture. If, if you guys yeah. you remember that moment? Yeah. And they yeah. were like, what the heck? You just like put, you know, you just like shoulder check John Taylor. And I was like, yeah, bro, don't worry. You guys will see what I'm doing here. Don't worry. Yeah. Uh, since then, John and I have made up and we are now friends, which is cool. And I look That's back awesome. at that, that picture. I'm like, man, those, you guys are, you guys are just studs, man. It's really, uh, it's really awesome. So, um, okay. Let me, uh, let me wa walk me through like what. Bro, five times Golden Door Award winner. This is, um, you know, to me, to me, I don't want to like over sensationalize it because it's it should be normal. Right. Um, so I don't mean I don't mean it when I'm like, oh my god, five times. Like, yeah, five times. You're doing your job. Like, your job is to hit a Golden Door. Like, that is the standard. At, at yeah. Solar City, when I was at Solar City, the minimum was seven deals. Our office was eight deals. So the minimum you had to hit a golden door to stay hired at, at the number one office that we were at Solar City. If you wanted to stay on in the number one office, number one, number yeah. two, depending on the month, but um, you had to hit a golden door. Like that was the standard, like just what it was. I see so many other companies um, that don't have even one or they have one golden door award winner. Um, and, and I know that it is hard because there's like a there's like a push and a pull. Um, kind of scenario where where people uh leaders like they don't want to they want they don't want to say they've got 10 guys they would rather have 100 guys and instead of running with 10 guys that are selling golden doors or half of them are selling golden doors you know the per rep average goes up like they want 100 guys so they can say they have 100 guys when they go to these masterminds or or whatever you know their right. christmas party is a bunch of dudes <clears> and a couple and um I, I don't know I, i've always ran on smaller teams the most guys i ever managed was 86 guys at one time and yeah. um i i didn't you know, I wasn't looking to have a thousand reps when I ran my solar companies. It was, it was, I wanted to create a per rep average of golden door award, which at that time was eight deals a month. Right. Um, and we, we didn't get that to the per rep average, but we got, we got close to that. I think it was six, a little, a little under six, uh, per rep average, um, was, our, wow. was our, was our guys, which at that point I was satisfied with, and we were con continuing before I exited the company. So, um, I don't want to over, like I said, I don't want to over sensationalize the, the five times doing it, but dude, that is definitely impressive. Um, I, I want to know, I want to know your mindset, some of your methods or formula, um, you know, what you're doing to hit the golden door. And then I'm really, really, really hoping that it's like something new that I've never heard of in my entire life. Because if you tell me just go out there and do the work, I'm going to be like, I'm going to turn the podcast <laughs> off. It's over. I don't want to talk to you anymore because I'm looking for the uh, new knowledge. I'm just kidding. No, please tell me it's the same. I'm, I'm sure all of the listeners know, and they're starting to realize that every single po golden door award winner that we have on the show is pretty much saying the same thing with their Cody Olive swag on it. So right. tell me, Cody, um, why have you hit Golden Door five years in a row? Yeah, awesome, great question. No, I uh, I just worked really hard, Mikey. Nah, no, you're just kidding. Uh, 
No, I think the main reason why me personally, I've, I've seen a lot of success for the Golden Door is I honestly think a little bit of my upbringing from baseball, where it's just a game of failure. Like, I, I don't think there's any other sport where you can fail seven out of 10 times and get paid $700 million. Shout out Shohei Otani. And so when I was selling in 2019, I would go with Ben and go with Calvin and be like, I keep getting tripped up on the spouse objection, or I keep getting tripped up on Terminex switchovers. And so I think especially sometimes when you have 20, 21 year old guys come out and sell, you know, sometimes it's a little bit of an ego check, but I think having that humility to self-reflect and be like, okay, I need to get better at switchovers. Okay. I need to get better at door to door company switchovers. Okay. Like do it yourself first. I don't even really try what's like, well, that's a deal you're living up on the table. So I think being able to really like self-reflect and pinpoint one or two things that you can get better on day by day, week by week, month by month. And then I think the second thing too, though, and especially what's unique about us here at The Grit is a lot of the times in the door-to-door space, someone does a golden door and then they step away and they're like, well, now I'm going to run a huge team where it's like, we totally fight that wholeheartedly where it's like, you know, we ran the biggest office at The Grit last year and we did over 7.4 million in downline production just in our New Jersey office. And I did a golden door. I did a million. Um, one of my main guys, Devin Smith, did a golden door, and he had a huge business too. And his little brother, Jaden Smith, did a golden door. And so we are so much here about people here at The Grit where it's like there's no way I can get up in that morning meeting each morning and look my guys in the eyes and be like, hey, like, you know, I'm giving it my all. You will give your all too. But, like, I'm not putting up six, seven, eight, ten deals a day and leading from the front. And so that's a huge, huge mantra here at the grit where it's like, just because you've gotten the golden door doesn't mean, doesn't mean you've made it to the top of the mountain. It means you keep doing it year after year, success story after success story, and you're trying to recreate yourself as many times as possible. And then, I mean, just dealing with you a lot, Mikey, like I work in three, so, so get ready for it. So the third thing too, though, is kind of from my parents, it's like you work hard, you always do your job, and you always do the right thing. And where it's like a lot of the times in door to door, because it's more casual, people think it's like, oh, well, like I'm going to sleep in this day or I'm going to sit on a park bench that day or I'm going to Uber over to the movie theater and, you know, catch the latest movie where it's like, oh, my gosh, there's Uber now. Oh, bro. These kids are just Ubering. No way. Oh, dude, it's it's insane. Where it's like you can just call an Uber now. Oh, my gosh, dude. (laughs) That would have never happened. I would literally stop stuck out there, bro, in my car. Oh, my gosh. They can Uber now. These kids have it made. Yep. And so it's just like, sorry, I didn't just realize I was like, there's no way, bro. I, <laughs> yeah. I, could, if, dude, I, I couldn't oh. eat how many times I had to like almost piss my pants. Cause I'm out there. I'm like, <laughs> dude, I got to find a freaking grocery store or gas station. I'm not the, this is not going to work. You can just uh, freaking go on your phone and Uber. Oh my gosh. Oh dude, it's a thousand percent. But it's like, it's like, if you're going to do that, then go home and do that. You know what I mean? Don't be out on the doors. And so with my point though, of like working hard and doing your job, it's like, you know, whether I was 16 and working at Albertson's grocery store or, or in the middle of New Jersey working for Goldman Sachs, it's like you always show up and do your job because at the end of the day, all you have is your word and your reputation. And so like in 2020, when I did that, like thinking it was going to be my last summer, it's like, well, if this is two years and done and go to law school, it's like, I'm going to be the best to ever do that because my name, Cody Olive, is on that. And so kind of a long-winded answer, but I just think with those three facets, um, I always like challenge myself. And so I really like the grit too, because guys here are always leveling up and challenging themselves on a personal fitness, spiritual success level. So then that way, year after year, you never get content. You know what I mean? You're satisfied, but, but never content. Satisfied, but not content. Yep. Let's go into that a little bit. Let's park there for a second. I have like 50 things I just wrote down. Yeah. Let's go there first since it's hot. Satisfied, but not content. Can you explain that to me a little bit? Yeah. 100% where it's like, like when I meet with John Taylor and we go over back end earnings, it's gotten to the point now where he just knows, or he's just like, so you're going to be satisfied, but never content. And like, yeah, until that hits my, you know, dollar amount every year, or, you know, until we have, you know, 10, 15 golden doors in our own business, or, you know, until we finally eclipse $20 million as a region, it's like, you know, I'm satisfied. I'm stoked. Like be happy, like happy for you guys, like proud of you guys. But it's like, we're never content because the way I view life, it's like, I think a lot of the reason why I ended up working at Goldman instead of going to law school is at that point in my life. And a lot of the guys at the grit know the story. It's like, I had four loved ones passed away. It was like my brother passed away, a best friend passed away. My grandma passed away and my grandpa passed away. And so it's like, I'm 21 years old and it's really formative years. 
and I'm sitting here, you know, in funerals, just like reflecting on life and hearing stories about their life. Or like, you know, I had to give my little brother's eulogy and that's really hard to put your family member's life into 10 pages. And so it's like, I have a 90 year sprint to make as much as I can for me, for my wife, my future family, and now especially all the people I work with at The Grit. That's pretty awesome. I think that uh, I, I was, I've, I've heard that called in a way, um, mortality motivation, I think is what yeah. it's called. Yep. Um, I learned, I learned that and cause now it's been 22 friends and family members have died since 2008, um, 2007, I guess now, um, in my life. And that, that was, uh, that was eye opening. So that's an yeah. interesting thing that, that you, you have that mortality motivation. Just, I don't, I think that's one of the reasons why people do end up getting complacent because they, they think that they're just going to live forever. And, and, uh, right. you know, the people that I was around, it, it wasn't, you know, some of them were, um, and I'm, I'm not even counting like natural deaths. I'm talking about drug overdose, suicide, drinking and driving, stuff like that. Like not, not like yeah. my grandmother passing away. Not that I'm not saying that that wasn't important, but like, um, obviously there's things to learn from that. But the ones that were like the younger ones that, um, you, you know, took their own life or, or overdoses stuff like that and, uh, or got hit by a drunk driver, stuff like that. Like, you know, you, you're like, bro, like I, I, I'm not, it's not that I'm not promised tomorrow. Not, I'm, I'm not, I'm not like going there. It's like, right. If I if I don't swing for the fences, then what what could I, I I guess what what am I what am I missing out on? Who who am I hurting potentially in the future? And yeah, I, I think that that's one of the reasons one of the reasons why I got sober now eleven years ago um, because I was like, dude, like I, I I'm like, I, I, what I, I got to do something better here. So um, right. that's really interesting. That's a really interesting point. Um, that that's yeah. a big motivator for you how often do you do you tend to go back to that or how often do you tap into that mortality motivation from your brother your uh uh and your family and so how often does that how often does that come up and how how often are you leveraging that yeah i i honestly think about it every day because it's like the way i was raised like even though my parents weren't military it was very much you know chop chop and like my nickname here at the grid sometimes is the sarge so sometimes i come off a little too forward and so it's like when i was at my brother's funeral it's like he had over you know a thousand people show up so it's just like okay how can i be more kind like that okay how can i be more impactful like that you know like my least favorite part of the week every week is when on your iphone you get like your screen time update and i'm like oh if this thing's over seven hours so help me and so it's like yeah. You know, am I being present with my wife? Am I being present with my guys? Am I trying to keep screen time down? So then that way, like, there's just, you know, there's there's so much like almost doomsday where it's like, oh, the world's this, where it's like, if you go out and travel and go to Asia, or we just did a charity trip in Dominican Republic, there's, there's so much good out in the world. And there's so much fun you can have and so much experiences that you'll always remember where it's like, here's me and my wife. My wife's this, you know, five, five blonde girl, buck nothing in the middle of, Dominican Republic painting this playground for these sweet children. And it's like, you know, I'll always remember that for the rest of my life. I love that. Yeah. What you, what you focus on is what, you know, is where you'll, uh, you'll spend your energy and it, it's sad. It's sad. It, it hurts. You know, I, I think that's one of the, the keys to my success as well is, you know, is, is removing as much of the negativity as possible, especially when I was getting sober, going through my personal development journey, self mastery journey. I was like, dude, if you don't, I mean, it's weapons of mass destruction, nine eleven, like yeah. now all these wars over here, like Trump and now Biden. And it's like, you know, <laughs> World War Three. Yeah. It's like, well, of course, I, I, I you know, I, I am convinced that they're doing that on purpose. Like whatever, whatever that force, whether it's evil or a, a darkness or whatever it is, um, not even necessarily evil, just uh, the other opponent of your right. time of, 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 you know, you reaching your fullest potential is there to distract you. So, um, Interesting, interesting uh, point of view on that. Um, satisfied, not content. Um, you said something. I what well, things that I try to write down, and I try. Any other no, thoughts on that before I transition? No, I, I just think I I want to live a life full of purpose and impact as many lives as possible, and you know, especially just make my family members proud, and then make a good life for for my wife and I. And I think here at the Grit, we have the best vehicle to do that. And you know, in five years being back from my mission, it's it's bless our lives, you know, 10 X. Yeah, that's awesome. I love that. Um, tell me a little bit about that. Let's talk about the grid a little bit. Um, it, it seems as if you guys are a personal development company that just so happens to sell pest control. What, what's up with that? Like, what is, 
why why is self development, self mastery, personal development so ingrained in what you guys are doing? Because it doesn't seem like you guys are selling pest control. It seems like you guys are a personal development company. Yeah, no, I think it's. I mean, love pest control, and it's it's a great you know field to be in. But I don't think a ton of us are that passionate about defending homes from bugs. You know, shout out Easton Bunker. Um, but I just think from guys like, you know, John Taylor to Garth Massey to Alec Withers to Dallas Jr. to Jackson Jr. It's like if you just had like 12 of your high school best friends and you were just like on this journey to compete and get better. And, you know, sometimes it's it's incredibly competitive where it's like if you look at our leaderboard, it's like unless you did a golden door, you were number 38, which is insane at any other company. And so we also have to always remind people where it's like, you know, lift where you stand. So like, that's always a big thing where it's like, lift with your stand, but it's also like bring the most out of yourself because we have so many talented people where it's like in, in 2020, it's like, I wanted to beat Josh Zuniga's record and do, you know, close to 900 K. And then Jackson told me that Drew wanted to do a million. So it's like, okay, I want to beat Drew then. So then that way, like that competition was nuts. Or then it's like, I look at Zach Seeger who'd done a million by like, august 2nd it's like holy crap like i gotta get on my horse so then that way like i could get the million done faster or it's like i look at alec withers who's just like so kind and so thoughtful and so loving to his guys and his people like absolutely love him and his business is exploding right now and so it's just like it's good healthy competition and then you mix that with the results that we have and then you know a lot of my best buddies you know love my best buddies to death but they're all like at McKinsey or they're at Deloitte or they're in dental school or just got out of law school and they're amazing. But it's just like, they've got to that point where it's like, all right, I'm going to plug my 20 years in the corporate world. We'll go to Hawaii once a year. And, you know, maybe in 20 years after we retire, we'll go to Europe. And it's just like, no offense, but that just seems so boring to me where it's like with all of our guys here, it's like, you know, Jackson Jr. is on this big health kick right now and he dropped over 20 pounds and like looks phenomenal. So it's like, I hired a personal trainer two weeks ago because I'm like, the last two years I haven't been as regimented with my health and fitness or, you know, since being out of school, I haven't read as much where it's like I had a goal myself to read a, you know, a book a month where like right now I'm reading Elon Musk biography and, you know, the examples go on and on, but it's just like, it's just this healthy competition where we all want to get better. So then that way we can turn around and for our people and people that join their grit, go and have an A plus experience as well too. I love that. What is uh what are what are some of the breakthroughs I guess you can say when it comes to your journey and personal development uh on, still still staying on that topic what are some of the breakthroughs that you've had in personal development uh in your career Yeah I would honestly say I think coming from Goldman Sachs and corporate America where so much of it is me 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 where it's like I want to be analyst I want to be the top VP you know you want to make the coveted position of being a managing director and make that you know famous Wall Street money where that's so much me, me, me. It's just like after 2021, when I like ran my first team, I just, I learned so much from, you know, Ben Egan about just how much truly it is about giving back. And so I think literally learning from Ben so much about giving back has been incredibly impactful because, you know, you look at today's day and age and so many relationships fall short or especially so many marriages fall short. And it's like, if you can find time for your loved ones, your business, for people to give back, I think you're going to always be in a good spot. You know what I mean? Um, I think another breakthrough is just honestly from my dad, where it's just like working hard. That's kind of my brand where it's like, no matter what happens, especially when you don't want to, you always show up and you always work hard and give it 150%. And then I think just being here at the grid and essentially after 2021, the reason why like I decided to be here forever and, you know, I'll plant my feet here the next 20, 30 years for however long is, you know, John, Garth, Ben, and all the dogs want to keep doing this is because I just, I never want to get to that. I call it like the vanilla stage where you're just kind of like clocking your eight to five and, you know, you're excited for the once a year Hawaii trip where it's like, no offense to anyone that lives that life, like to each their own. But like for me, like I don't want that vanilla stage. And so it's just like, I think that breakthrough of like, no matter how old I am, age is just a number where it's like, okay, let's make 30 to 40, like the best shape that I'm in. Let's make 40 to 50, you know, the most, you know, traveled stages of my life. Or, or you, you get what I'm saying, where it's just like, I love those three facets of life. So it sounds like you're continually measuring backwards. I love that you're never content um, you're continually your continual focus on growth 
Let me pause here for a second. Yeah. A little Jeopardy theme music. <laughs> I know, right? I mean, it's like, it's almost like guys that are listening, like, hey, you didn't hit a golden door. Um, Cody, who just hit his fifth in a row, um, <laughs> is like literally focused solely on how do I get better and is continuing to grow and invest in himself. I mean, it's like, I, I, I always try to find Cody. I'm trying to find like the formula of what makes, uh, you know, a top athlete in door door sales, a golden door award winner, right? The top zero, 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 one percent of the door knockers out there. Yeah. And it, it, it's very, um, which is cool because I've been asked this on, on, on other podcasts when I'm on podcasts and they ask me like, Hey, you know, like, you know, your, your podcast, you, you interview all these top guys, like these major athletes. And I'm like, yeah, they're like, what's common? What's the most common thing? Um, and a couple of them, like you just said, is your continual focus on growth and that you're never satisfied. Yeah. And ironically, that that is looked at like, you know, can't you just be content with what you have? Um, and I, I think that we, we've misunderstood a lot of what the Bible says about like being content yeah. um, and, and, and thriving to be the fullest potential you have. It's almost like, well. You know, in the, in, in the parable uh, of uh, uh, when Jesus says uh, the master gives his the talents, the parable of the, the talents. So the, the master gave said, hey, look, I'm going to give my servants or those people uh, 10 talents, which is like, you know, $100,000, $50,000 and like $10,000. And yeah. he's like, cool, go out and go out and do what you want. And I'll come back. And he came back in like whatever it was, a few years or whatever it was close. I'm paraphrasing. Obviously, I haven't brushed up on that in a couple of months. <laughs> but you know the uh, the guy that was given a hundred thousand dollar equivalent kind of concept um, turned it into two hundred thousand dollars. Well, if yeah. that hundred thousand dollar guy shouldn't he have been just like our culture? Correct me if I'm wrong here. If you kind of see where I'm going with this, but like our culture kind of like says like you, you've made one hundred fifty thousand, you, you're, you're you're up, you know, you're up fifty percent. Why don't you just chill? Like, dude, yeah. relax, slow down. Like, why don't yeah. you enjoy your life? Like, enjoy your life, Cody. Like, my God, five times. Like, what are you doing? Like, how many more <laughs> golden doors do you need, buddy? Um, uh, you know, but the guy, the, the guy in the story that Jesus was talking about did not stop at 50% return. He went to 100% or 200% return, right? 100% return, right? right? So got his money back plus, you know, uh, another 100% on that. So the same thing with the the 50,000, the five talents, you know, went from 50,000 to another 50,000. So 100% return again. Um, right. And the guy that was scared, the one talent or the 10 grand, I guess you could say equivalent to our time and frame. So people understand that they're not like familiar with that story. You know, he hit it and said, master, like, you know, I, I didn't want to lose your, lose your $10,000. So here's it back. And technically the master was pissed. Cause he was like, bro, first of all, you could have put it in the bank and at least got like a 1%, 2%. You didn't get anything. You got jacked to lose squats. So actually you lost me money. So it's funny how Jesus talks about money in the Bible a lot. But anyways, yeah. like, like there's, there's just like this, um, I don't know, man, like this, 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 uh, I get it all the time. And I want the other listeners, other golden door award winners that are listening to this to know, like when I struggle with the same thing of, I get people that try to pour into my life that love me. And, uh, you know, they say, you know, why don't you enjoy your life? And I'm like, dude, I don't think you get it. Like I freaking love what I do. Like what, what about you watching me on social media doesn't seem like I'm not enjoying my life. Right. Uh, I just got back from a cruise to raise a little over $2 million <clears throat> while I was on the cruise, like on a cruise boat in my, in my room on the balcony, making phone calls, raising money. Like how, how, how is that like not the best office? Like, I just, I don't understand when people go, you need to enjoy your life or you need to slow down. Why don't you be content with what you have? Why do you have to have it all? Your cake needed it too. And I'm like, I just why, why I don't know why not. So does, does that happen to you as far as uh, as far as you know people around you asking you know if uh, you know Cody why don't you slow down why don't you does your wife do that to you like what what's what's up dude Yeah my my wife and my father in law are like well why don't you slow down or like you know my father was like your goals are way up here like you need to bring him down here and it's just like I mean obviously it's a fun he, lo he loves you right Yeah hundred percent. And you have to find balance, but it's also like, do you really? Because then like, I'm honestly okay being imperfectly balanced where it's just like, I love, love, love having a busy schedule. I love, love working hard. But then I love going to Vegas for two days and tuning out. Or I love going to Cabo for four days with my wife and just tuning out where it's just like, I just love being imperfectly 
unbalanced. So then that way I can live a more fulfilled life because I just, I don't want to look back and think, you know, I wish I would have done this bigger. I wish I would have done that better where it's like in, you know, in, in 2021 where it's like, I just golden door. And, you know, I say that lightly, like I just golden door, but like, I look back at that 2021 summer and I'm just like, I freaking should have just stayed out longer and, and hit the million and hit the thousand accounts. So that way I could literally have, you know, 5,000 accounts, five golden doors and 4 million where it's like now I'm five, four, three. And it's like, I live that big time. Or it's just like, you know, being real raw with you where it's like, of course you have a sibling die. And it's just like, I wish I would have been a better brother. You know what I mean? And so it's just like, when people tell me like, you need to relax or people tell me like, well, why aren't you ever content? It's just like, because I feel like life is all about progressing where it's just like, yeah, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy. My wife and I are happy. We love our life. But it's like, I don't feel like you ever make it in life where it's like, I feel like this is like some cultural thing where like almost like in the sixties where they try to like push like smoking was cool on you. There's kind of like this like cultural thing where they try and push like there's like this balance, but it's like, I wholeheartedly think the other way where it's like you never truly make it in life. And it's always about just working hard, making memories with those that you love and just trying to enjoy the time you have here on this earth. And that's my, you know, gospel according to Cody Olive. But I, I think this culture of like, you know, your balance and all, I, I think it's dog water. I think you never make it in the life and it's just trying to be your, your best self and, and do those three things. Okay. Let's pause there. Why is it, why is it that they push that on us? Like why has the culture, do you know what it's come from? Like, why is it that have you researched that know much about it? Like why are, why, why are we trying to promote? Why is, I guess the culture around us trying to promote this, like be content, um, you know, balance, like you said, what is up with that? I mean, there's no right or wrong answer here. And this is just my humble yeah, opinion. I yeah. But I, I think it's almost kind of like people are afraid to be uncomfortable. I think people are, you know, kind of nervous to be real bra or vulnerable with people. And I think, you know, especially the more you can be self-aware that I honestly think you can have more self-fulfillment, but it's almost like you get like the nine to five, you get the house, you have the two kids in the suburbs, you know, they play little league and T-ball. And like, that's kind of like your utopia, which is great. And, you know, by all means, like, I mean, that's honestly the upbringing that I had, but it's like, I feel like as Gen Z's and especially as social media gets bigger and bigger, there's, there's so much more self-awareness than there ever has been before. And there's so much more like self-development than there ever has been more before and you know like mikey and yourself there's so many fantastic coaches out there where it's just like i feel like as baby boomers start to die off and millennials kind of become the new age group and as gen z starts to mature more i feel like we'll start to see less and less of that kind of like you know content but i just feel like that was kind of the status quo for years and it's just like you know i was just down with my parents and like you know a kind of a, a common thing is like well, I'm getting older. So like, I'm just, I'm going to gain weight. I'm going to get old and I'm going to die where it's like on Netflix. If you've watched how to live to be a hundred, it's like, you have these people out in Okinawa, Japan that are, you know, a hundred years old watering their gardening and pulling out radishes and vegetables. And it's like, I want that. I think that that is, um, okay. So that's definitely something that I've thought about multiple times where, yeah, as you and this is why I've I've lost thirty pounds since COVID. Congrats. Gained, Congrats. gained thirty pounds and lost lost it. Plus I lost technically ten pounds before that. I'm down to two ten now. Before nice. COVID, I was about two twenty, two twenty two, two twenty five. Got up to like two forty, two forty five. I'm back, like I said, back down to two ten, two oh nine now. And the reason why was because if I didn't do that, then people would be right. Number one, my dad would be right that you're always gonna be a uh, an, uh, what is it? a moose? They used to call me Michael the Moose. Um, <laughs> you, know, you know, Michael, you should just accept it. Just accept that. You know, and I was just with my dad, so this is why this stuff's coming up. But like, you know, you, and it's not just him. But this is like you said, it's just culturally speaking. Like, you know, you should just accept that you're a moose. You're just overweight. Our whole family's overweight. Just accept that. And I'm like, no, bro. Like, I want to be able to when I'm 55 years old, be able to run a marathon and yeah. then go home and be and have enough energy to be with my kids. Like, yeah. I don't want to have to like. Oh, I don't have enough energy. Like, no, dude, there's dude. Not only that, Cody, there's dudes that I see are doing it. So I know it's possible, which 100%. is awesome. 
Um, so I think that that, especially working at the grid um, and having got in ha- your guy seeing you hit that not only that many counts, but that many counts year after year after year after year after year. Um, it, 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 a lot of times it comes down to proximity and a lot of times what people see is their, I guess you could say self-limiting beliefs or, um, you know, they're, they're limiting their based off of their experience of what they've seen instead of just looking left and being like, okay, well that guy's 70 years old and has got a six yeah. pack. Like, why not? Why not me? And I, again, I decided I didn't want to do that. I know the show's not about me, but I'm just like, I'm learning from you right now. I'm like, oh, that's why I'd like to do that. So um, you said end to the utopia lifestyle um, or I I wrote lifestyle Um, End to the utopia. Tell me about that. Like what, what is, I talk about in my book, purposeful profit, mastering the millennial mindset for success. I talk about how the American dream is dead and it's this utopia. um, I write and I say, um, you know, basically I'm paraphrasing, but basically that, you know, the goal for, you know, millennials, 20 and 30 year olds was, you know, that if you work really, really hard, you know, you can get a good secure job, six figure salary, you know, good benefits, good retire, decent retirement, um, you know, be able to go on your one to three vacations a year and okay. have a, you know, a two and a, a two, a two story house, nice three to 4,000 square foot home, your Tahoe, your, you know, your Teague or whatever, your boat, your ski boat <laughs> and your side by side and your escalate in the, you know, your escalator, your Tahoe in the driveway and, yeah. And, you know, your white picket fence and your dog named Charlie. And like for most people, that's okay. But for right. everybody else that doesn't want that, that doesn't want to sell for that, it's, it's, um, I think that they have a hard time, most people, hard time accepting that it's going to be a lot of work to get there, number one. Yeah. But they also have a hard time believing that's true. So why don't you tell me about this utopia that, uh, as I said in my book, that the American dream is dead. As as we know it, the whole like American dream thing is gone. Um, not that there's still not a great opportunities out there, but the yeah. you know get a retention, get a pension, all that kind of stuff is not what our parents. So we have to change. We have to pivot. AI is here. Like things have changed. What about this utopia is is uh, is on your mind? I just think it's a different it's a different time now where it's like. Um, my dad worked 36 years for the landfill and he retired with a hundred percent pension and, and great benefits. Wow. And I just think that's not a thing anymore. And you literally look at, I mean, I'm not a huge social media presence, but it's like, you look at some of these people that run classes or masterminds or are big into day trading or big into the crypto space or, you know, have a health coaching class. And it's like, these guys are making incredible money. And so it's like, this dream of, you know, let's, let's pump our, our 20 years at, you know, Exxon or Boeing and then hope to retire. And then, you know, I'm going to spend around my grandkids, which is great, but it's also like, I think it's more of a positive thing where it's like, I've only been home from my LDS mission for five years. And like in those five years, we've been able to leave the country several times, been able to invest a ton of money. My wife and I built a brand new, beautiful home here in Provo. And then my wife can like the phrase I've been using a lot lately is like, we can do what we want when we want with who we want. And like, that was my whole goal of going against that utopia. Because again, like I love my parents so, so much and they taught me so much hard work, but it's like, there's some times where my parents are in California and we're here in Provo and it's like, let's just go meet up in Vegas for the weekend and hang out or go catch a show or, you know, go try some new steak restaurant or whatever. And they're like, well, I got to ask for, you know, pay time off or I got to schedule my, my Thursday, Friday off. And it's like, Again, I'm trying my hardest to be, you know, correct and not bashing on it. Like, if that's your dream, like, again, tweet your own. But with now we're going against that grain. There's so many ways where you can make so much money so fast. And if you live below your means and invest it, again, to repeat that phrase, it's like you can do what you want when you want with who you want. And that's my whole goal where it's like my wife and I don't have any kids yet. But by the time my kids are playing t-ball, it's like I truly will be able to live that dream where, like, I won't miss a single sporting event we'll have the funds to put them in the best programs. Like I remember playing travel ball in Southern California where it's like, we'd have to have garage sales sometimes, or I'd have to learn how to go sell things sometimes. So that way we could pay for certain travel ball tournaments because that craft's expensive. And so it's just like, again, going back to the grit and door to door. And again, whatever your vehicle is, pour as much gas as you can into it. So that way you can go against that. So then that way, again, like third time's the charm, like you can truly do what you want with who you want, whenever you want. And so like, that's kind of like, as we go from 30 to 40 and, you know, we start to have some kids and begin that, like, I am so laser focused on that because 
you know, like, again, going back to loving my parents, but it's like, you know, sometimes living down in Orange County, my dad would have to work three jobs. So that way we could pay the bills. And it's like, my dad missed a ton of my games. Or it's like, you know, I was telling Mikey before the show started, we just went down to a funeral in Southern California. And it was my best buddy's dad. And like, it was so cool. All three of his kids, when they spoke at the funeral, the main thing they all said is my dad was at every single one of my baseball games. And he always drove me there. And we always had a chat about after that. And it's like, I hope my kids say that same thing about me at, at my future funeral. You really love those threes. Oh, I do. That's just, that's, I am so type A where it's like, that's how my brain works. I love that. Um, is that why you left? Let's talk, let's, um, let's kind of go back and try to plug things together here. Cause I'm, I'm starting to see the whole picture, which is really cool. And I hope the listeners see this too, but let me, uh, if they don't, let me try to tie it together. It sounds yeah. a lot like if I'm correct me if I'm wrong here, but it sounds a lot like you left the corporate world working at a great company, Goldman Sachs, where you could have very easily been just as successful, right. um, if not more. I mean, in, in, at Goldman Sachs, I mean, if you're not the, you know, the bottom of the barrel, you're, you're doing really well. Um, right. and, and, and it seems as if you would have excelled there uh, very quickly to the point yeah. where you would have could have opened up your own, uh, you know, private equity or private investment uh, firm. Right. If that would have been your plan. Um, so it sounds a little bit like there was with the mort mortality motivation, seeing how the, what life could be like, so you're 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 looking not only at your parents like I just want to be a little bit better than my parents. You're looking right. at other families that you grew up with, and potentially now even more. Um, you're opened up your horizons to see what is really possible, and now you're saying, "Hey, I'm going to sacrifice because now you just said I want to live under my means, which I really want to talk about." Right. Um, so that by the time my kids are in T-ball, I don't have to miss any of those games. Um, I mean, brother, that is like the most respectable thing I think I've heard from anybody that I've had on my show that right Thanks. there, I know that you're a real top one zero 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 one percenter. Like I know that you are that because you meant it when you said that, and you yeah. are obviously very clearly working your tail off to get to that point. So let's talk about that a little bit. Um, am I, am I on some, to something here? Yeah, 100%. Um, I think like I, like my financial advisor, he like he said something that was really key uh, a couple of weeks ago, where it's just like be an A player in a C space, and so it's like pest control by no means is like KKR or BlackRock or Goldman Sachs or Deloitte, and like, but I love pest control, but it's like killing bugs isn't sexy, and so being an A player in a C space, it's just like okay, I can easily crush it where it's like when I was at Goldman like I was a top five percent analyst like I got a great bonus that's why they wanted me to move out to New Jersey and like be influential in that team that I was on but it's like when I was at Goldman that's when they took Shake Shack uh, the northeast east coast burger chain public like trading on the New York Stock Exchange and I just remember just like having to always be on that Blackberry and it's like I had no social life and it's like I was living with like my college best buddy's older brother and him and I became you know really good buddies and it's like when he was done with his eight to five, like he was truly done where it's like, I always had to have like Blackberry. Like that's what we used back then. It's like, we always had to have that Blackberry going. And it's just like, when I came back from my mission, I knew I wanted to do sales to make money for law school. But at that time, so that older brother that I live with, the younger brother, who was my college best buddy, he was at Emory law school. And like, he was just hating his life where it's just like, he was a married for about a year and he's st studying for like torts and civil law exams. And I'm just like, is this the path I want to go down where it's just like, you know, I just went out and made more than a quarter of a million bucks in five months. And it's like, yeah, I like, I really like Goldman. I like their prestige. I love the people I work with where it's like the person to my left, she was like all state for like women's rowing and went to like Ohio state law school. The lady in front of me was like the first like women led peer review, legal review person for Columbia law. Like this other guy to my right was from Guatemala and then like had gone to law school at you at like, such impressive people but i just again just like looking at my parents and then the life that i wanted to live it was just like i don't want to go 10 years to like finally make partner and start to make the money that i feel like i want to make to go do the things that i want to do and so it's just like had to you know swallow my humble pie um went into pest control and then was super blessed that like you know we have all these great guys here at the grit 
What was that? Uh, what was that like? What were? Uh, did you get any calls or did you feel people like being like <laughs> Cody's went from <laughs> Goldman was you know on the way to be up here and now went to pest control door to door? Yeah. Uh, why don't you walk me through that? Because I don't think a lot of people understand that my partner in my energy fund is from New York. Yeah. Um, and it's taken about two years for him to like respect door to door people. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, he, he's been, was W2 for his whole entire life, you know, was a top paralegal for the largest real estate developer in the country. And, uh, you know, so tell me a little bit about that. Cause that would first of all help me, but I want to understand how you dealt with that mental, yeah. um, that mental issue or whatever we want to call it. I think honestly, like, and I kind of talked with like Ben and John about this, but I think that's also why 2021, I still golden door, but I think that's why I had a dip because I've started to have that realization that I was going to leave that world where it was like, okay, 2019, I'm going to make my funds to pay for law school and cash because I didn't want to take out absorbent school loans. Okay. 2020 is my last year to kind of like pad the bag. So that way I have enough through and after law school and, you know, Alexa and I were getting serious at that time and, you know, we're coming in on an engagement. So I wanted enough for my future family, but it was like, okay, I'm doing these two years. I'm making enough money. I'm going to go pay for this JD MBA at Penn or Northwestern or some prestigious Northeastern Ivy league school. And then once 2021 hit, it's like, you know, I had these two guys that were just like super impactful and I got to see them go out and make six figures and, you know, go do what they wanted to do with, you know, who they wanted and when they wanted. And I just remember like in the fall of 2021, just being like, okay, like my dream of wanting to be a lawyer since I was five years old, I, I think is, out the bag, but who's to say, you know, hopefully one of these days they make the law degree, a two-year degree. And I think when I'm in my forties, just to go get that for further education, but here's, here's my hopes and dreams of being an attorney, like no more Harvey Specter out the door. So that was a tough pill to swallow. And I think it was just getting over my own pride. So I think that was number one, because when you go talk with people, it's like, you'd run into people at social and networking events. And it's like, what are you doing now? Like, you know, we miss you over at the office. Like, how are you? And it's like, yeah, I'm selling pest control door to door. And they're like, Kirby vacuums. And I'm like, no, no, no. Like, cause like so many people, even in this day and age have that, even better you know, bug juice. <laughs> yeah. Pest control. You're, I'm killing your ants. And so it was just a big, like, and I was 26. So it's just like some of you guys that are 20, 21, 22, like I have the utmost respect for you guys. Cause I had to get over my pride there. I think the second thing then too, was just like owning it where it's just like, yeah, this is what I'm going to do. This is my thing. And I'm going to be super proud of it where it's like now when I talk with all my friends and like they see us on social media or we just open up our big building here in Linden, Utah, they're like, it's really impressive, like how committed you guys are all to each other, what you guys have built and how many lives you're, you're impacting. And so kind of long story short, where it's like, there's, there's no easier way to say it than it's just like kind of getting over yourself where it's like, especially over here at BYU, so much is that BYU finance program where it's like, I'm going to wear my you know, no coincidence, I'm just kidding. But it's like, I'm gonna wear my Patagonia three quarter zip. And I'm, I'm going to go work at Deloitte for the summer where it's like, again, like to each their own kudos to you. But I had that realization where it's just like, it doesn't matter how you make your money, just as long as you're doing it the right way, you're working hard. And then again, it's creating that freedom, which we've touched on a few times. I love that. That's a uh, golly, you are, uh, you are definitely well-rounded and educated, bro. I really like that. Um, <laughs> Thanks, man. So you did, you, you did struggle, you did struggle with that. What, what was that? Walk me through a, um, walk me through a situation where that happened when you went home and you were alone and you know, you're at, when you went to an outing and you, know, with all your confidence said, yeah, I'm doing, you know, I'm selling bug juice now. Um, it happened to me, you know, even with alarms and with solar. So I, I you know, they're like door to door, like, Oh, cool. Cool, yeah. man. Walk me through that. Like, what, what did you, how, how did you break through that, um, that pride factor? Like you said, you're right. Like, this was not like you're 1920. You have time to like fail. Oh, oh, oh yeah. You're, oh, you're, it's cute. You're going back to door to door. Like, oh, at yeah. 20, 21, 22, it's not that bad. But at 26, 27, you're like, oh, that sucks, buddy. Sorry for you. Yeah. Walk me through that. Like, what, 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 it, what was the dark side of that, uh, for you when you were alone? Honestly, there was one time when I was back at home, I can't remember what for, I was either 
holidays or, or something, but like I was with my mom and like this, this family that like we'd play base, I'd play baseball with their kids like our whole lives. And like, you know, he just got done with USC undergrad. He was working at some big accounting firm down in Costa Mesa, which is kind of like kids my age in Southern California. That's where they all want to go live and work and be. And they're like, well, what are you doing now? It's like, yeah, I had just gotten back from a summer in Milwaukee. Like we sold pest control door to door. And they're like, like you were like knocking on people's doors. Like how was that with like COVID and stuff? And they were like so worried about that. And like you couldn't even tell, like it was hard to like my mom, she wasn't embarrassed, but she, my mom felt like she had to like stick up for me. And she was just like, oh, they're building a home right now. And I'm just like, I'm like, mom, like it's, it's fine. Like I'm, I'm okay with where I'm at. But like speaking of that, like even like my own parents, like until we finally like closed and our home was built and like my parents were in it and like we literally designed a room just for them to come visit and stay there. Like kind of like, oh, like, so this whole pest control thing kind of like pays the bills and it works out. And I'm like, yes. And so again, I think like, you know, it's, it's a, it's a hard thing to say even now, but being fully vulnerable to all the gold door guys, which I honestly think is huge for winning gold door. You have to be self-aware and vulnerable with yourself is I think in 2021, why I struggled or I had a down year is just getting over my own pride of wanting to be this big corporate attorney and be, you know, the Harvey Specter of Orange County. I love it. The, uh, the new iPhone is continuing to throw bubbles up of your thumbs up. <laughs> so if you watch this on YouTube, you're seeing that if you're listening to this on uh, Apple podcast or Spotify or wherever else you're watching this, listening to this, it's kind of funny. There's this new update on Apple is throwing up bubbles of thumbs up because you keep throwing your thumbs up. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's interesting, man. I, I, um, how many, I, it's been five years now for you. So I, I don't know if I had that much success in my five years, um, I was, uh, it probably started around year five, year six year seven for me is when I really started like showing that I was, I guess you could say making really, really good money. I was making good money, my, not in the first two years, but after year three, I, I broke a hundred grand, um, six figures and then obviously never went back from there. But, um, the, the, the same thing I get, I would just, I would say happened to me where, you know, my family, when I were, I'd go talk to them and, you know, I try, I, I, I almost like tried to hide behind like the profession of, Oh, I'm a consultant, a solar consultant, right. Yeah. Instead of a door to door person. And I almost felt like though I have so much pride for what I had done in a good way, in a positive way, I still felt like I needed to have uh, be accepted by people. And I think that's um, one of the, one of the, I posted about this yesterday on Instagram and, and LinkedIn. Like, I think that that is one of the main things that men struggle with is that they they want to be accepted most of part most of the time even high achievers high performers yeah. they want to be accepted by people and and you'll never reach your fullest potential if that's all you're really focused on is being accepted because you'll never do you know the extra mile the extra fifth sixth mile if you just is do people are gonna think Cody's crazy like they think yeah. you're crazy bro they think you're crazy. Like you're, 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 you're a, you're a lunatic, bro. Yeah. Five yeah. time golden. You're a lunatic, bro. What are you doing? Yeah. Let me, uh, let me ask you this really quick. Uh, as I transition here, um, and I have this quote up here that we, t I, I looked it up earlier cause I, I was, we were talking about it. Let me talk about that really quick so I can get off my screen. I looked it up. My boss arrived to work one day in a brand new Lamborghini. I'm sure you've seen this vid this video. <laughs> And I said, wow, what an amazing car. He replied, if you work hard, put in all your hours and strive for excellence, I'll get another one next year. Uh, I don't know why I brought that up, but uh, I thought it was pretty funny. And I figured I would talk about it because it just popped up on my screen again. So um, yeah. it was probably had something to do with uh, uh, you putting in hard work. I yeah. don't know why I brought it up, but I thought it was pretty funny to talk about. Um, tell me about this living under your means. Um, yeah. Where did you get that from? I know that you're 30 now, about to be 31. Um, how old's your wife? Alexa, she's 25. Okay. So where, where did you get this idea that you needed to live under your means? I think it's, um, it's a good question. I think my parents, again, like I just try to learn. And again, like for the viewers, like I learned a ton from my parents working hard, how to have a good sense of humor and not to take your life so seriously. But again, just that whole baseball mindset of just like, okay, I'm off on the fastball. I need to tweak this and then I'll hit out of the park where it's like, again, looking at my parents, it's like my dad's 70 and my mom's 63 and my mom, my dad's fully retired, but my mom is still working part time. And so it's like, they need to make sure to have enough money for benefits. And, you know, there's a certain few things they want to pay off. And so it's like, 
that first summer, you know, I made incredible money and, you know, we're here in Provo, Utah, Idaho, where like you can find rent for 400 bucks a month. So it's like, okay, I can find incredibly cheap cost of living. God bless BYU. I, I graduated, you know, debt free. I, I don't have, you know, hundred, hundred fifty, two hundred thousand dollars worth of school loans. Besides, you know, taking Alexa out, I don't have any really debts or any, you know, pressing bills. It's like, let's save as much as we can. So like, especially in 2019 and 2020 and 2021, I saved as much money as I could. And I invested, you know, 60, 70, I think, you know, in 2020, I invested like 80% of the money I made because I got into this later in life. And so I wanted to compound super fast and it's paid huge dividends now. But it's like when I got married to Alexa, like we actually, pr I proposed to her on the lot that we built. It's like, hey, let's start our life together where we're going to live our lives together. So it's like, I thought that was pretty cool. And like, I want, I've always wanted to do that with her and for her. And so I wanted to make sure when we were married, it's like, okay, we had enough invested. My sweet wife who puts up with my intensity and my crazy goals, like she just has like a nest where it's like, you know, say what you want about traditional roles. But like, I think I still feel like most women are very motherly. And if they can have a comfy home, a nice nest, beautiful kitchen and, and have those things like they can feel at peace. And I want that for my wife. And so like, especially in 2020 and, and 2021, like my, my boss, Ben, who's one of the managing partners, I literally drove his Toyota Corolla. So it's like, a lot of people don't know this. Like I drive a, a Porsche take on turbo S now, like I got the four door electric. I finally treated myself, but it's like a lot of people don't know for 2020 and 2021, I didn't even own a car and I was making incredible money. So it's just like, I'm going to invest as much as I can. So that way I'm not having to worry about retirement when I'm in my sixties, I can retire, you know, when I'm 35, but I mean, I'll always work because I, I like the challenge. I like the stimulation. I like the relationships. I can retire when I'm 35. And again, just to keep repeating myself, like I can do what I want when I want with who I want. Okay. Why, why though? Why, what is it? that is different with you than other Golden Door Award winners. There's not, um, there's not very many Golden Door Award winners that I've interviewed personally that I know yet um, or, or people even in the industry other than like I think maybe 10 people that I know yeah. of that think like actually like that and that are doing it. Maybe 15 people. Like there's some bigger guys that I, I think about too when, I, when you say that. You know, do what you want when you want where, with who you want. I think immediately Dave Allred, who was a mentor of mine for for a very long time, um, yeah. and, and close friend of mine. Um, the the idea of like designing your lifestyle, retiring by thirty five now within five years for you, um, and living under your means. Wh why? I think that it comes from. I just got back from a Tony Robbins event, so it sounds more like you actually have ultimate clarity on what that looks like in, uh, in five years from now for you, which technically was 10 years ago. And, yeah. and I'm, I'm assuming that it's, it's, it's um, either changed, grown, adapted, however you want to talk about it. I'm sure it has because the same thing happened for me. But yeah. what, what, what is it that allows you? Okay. So I, I'm, I'm going to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to articulate this how I want to, because this is, this is a conversation that I, I like, I love having this conversation. Yeah. I don't believe in delayed gratification. I believe in delayed return. Delayed gratification, I believe, leads to burnout. And I don't even believe in burnout. But that road, right. you jump off of a, you, 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 you walk off the cliff kind of concept. But yeah. delayed return is where you actually have clarity on what your end goal or like your exit strategy is. And, and dude, that's like what I talk about consistently because people yeah. come to Mikey Lucas because – you know, I'm like, you know, the, the passive income engineer, like I've got this, like, you know, this knack for money. I'm like, I don't have a knack for money. I just had nothing. And I didn't want to be an, a loser when I was 40 years old. So I read yeah. every single freaking finance book I could get my hands on like five, 10, 15, 20 times a piece. Like, and I'm yeah. not like this master at money. I just, I, I, uh, I guess you could say I, I am now or I'm working on it, but like, I just, I didn't want to be a loser when I was 40 years old and not have choices. I wanted, to, if I wanted to, like you said, go, you know, fly your family out to go to Vegas. Like I didn't want to have to be like, let me call my boss and let me ask if I can have time off. I wanted to yeah. have choice. Like that's what freedom I believe is, is having buying your time back. I didn't just want money and have the boats and the houses and beautiful kitchens. Like you said, like I, I wanted my time back. Like if I had yeah. all of those other things, I didn't have my time. 
Like it's worth to me. It's worthless. Yeah. I 100% agree. Why, why are guys missing that Cody? Like, what is, what it like, what is it? I think I have an answer for it, but I, I want to know within your, within your point of view and your perspective, like within your guys, like what are, like, how do you get guys over that hump? Like, how are you getting them to have clarity on an exit strategy like that? Like you do. Yeah, I honestly think kind of like what we touched on a few questions ago was just kind of like going against the grain, going against that status quo where it's just like, you know, being able to self-reflect and being able to be vulnerable where it's like, especially in door to door males, very testosterone dominated, very like Wolf of Wall Street vibes. You're, you're not going to get up there and like, you know, self-reflect and be vulnerable or, or get emotional or be like, Hey, this, this thing that's really hard for me, I'm not going to talk about it and get strong about it. And so it's just like, I feel like if we can kind of get over that stigma and then also just more people can see the results that come from it and the freedom that people live for it, because not to get religious, but it's like, you know, I'm, I'm an active member of, you know, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And it's like, you know, we believe in what's called the plan of salvation, which is kind of like your purpose in life, going from your earth life to eventually an eternal life with your family and your loved ones. And like your whole purpose here in life is just to progress and to be tested and to learn and to grow. And so kind of like, you know, that mortality driven motivation, it's just like, I think if you can do that, you won't kind of become idle. And so then that way you can continue to progress because again, it's like, if you have the white picket fence and the two story home, like you've kind of checked the boxes, but like, are you really happy? Are you really fulfilled? Are you really like being able to do what you want to do where it's like, you know, the last year or so, like I found out, like I actually really loved reading where it's like in high school, I took a ton of AP classes and like, I hate reading. I hated all the note taking and the reading I had to do where it's like, I found this new love for, for reading or it's like, you know, a little story, like why I'm that way. It's like my mentor, um, from my hometown in, in your Belinda, like he sat me down and like on a big, huge, like white parch parchment piece of paper, like he, we planned out my life from 16 to 30 and just like major points, like what you want to accomplish that year, socially, spiritually, you know, you know, certain categories. And it's like, you know, I look at that sometimes and it was like, you know, 18, I wanted to go to like USC. And then at like, you know, 22, I, I thought I would be at like UCLA or Penn. And like, here I am selling bug spray, married a Utah girl, and I live in Provo, Utah. And so it's like, I think everyone should do that too, because then they can realize how much life changes and then they can realize what's like, well, if I do these things, I can actually reach that fulfillment and actually be more happy instead of kind of just being that, that vanilla stage. I think you said something very important there. Um, so listeners, I would reverse this about four or five minutes and go back and listen to that part again. That was fire. Thank you for that, bro. Um, <laughs> Thanks. I think you said something very important. Um, like this, this, this uh, pursuit of happiness, this pursuit yeah. of fulfillment. I think what a lot of people don't understand is that you didn't get the Porsche until you had probably a lot of four or five figures a month uh, in passive income. You didn't have the beautiful house, which by the way, I'm looking at right now. Dope. Well done. <laughs> Thanks, uh, man. Until you had the passive income, you, you, you delayed return so that you could have the choices and lifestyle because you knew that once you were there, you would have, you would be happier. Yeah. And I think, ha I think when people are unhappy, it's because they have uncertainty or they're not certain that they can, uh, uh, or sure that they're going to have, they're going to, they're not going to be bankrupt at the end of the, at the end of their career. And I see that all the time in door to door sales. It's like, or in real estate, it's like, you know, real estate, Forex trading, crypto trading, um, Real estate investment, wholesaling, uh, you know, Amazon drop shipping, and all these guys, they get all this money. And it's like, it's a cash grab. And it's what's happening right now. Again, like anybody that invested in 2020, 21, 22, all of a sudden they're an expert. They got their own, you know, thousand, two thousand, five thousand dollar course and mastermind. And like, you're like, bro, you, you just, you're going to, you've already lost all of it. Like, what happened? So yeah. the, the idea around pursuit of, I think you have, pursuit of happiness i'm trying to figure out how there's a book around this for you to write um, um yeah. there there's like this pursuit of happiness pursuit of fulfillment that actually means having lifestyle freedom choices for you um is is something that i think you should pursue i don't know why i said that but i just feel that is something that i'm hearing um yeah. you've got a lot of experience in that and i think that you need to you deserve it it 
you owe it to the next generation and the current your, your, and your future children to do something about that. Um, you've got something in you that is, um, you've got something there and, and there's something there. I think you need to pursue that. If you're not already pursuing that, I, I really think you really implore you to do that. Um, cool. I haven't told anybody on my podcast ever to do that. So just know that, that this is, <laughs> there's something special about this, something unique about you on here uh, for, for saying this, you've got all this knowledge and wisdom. I think, you know, just by your experience, people would uh, have major breakthroughs. Um, yeah. And uh, I, I think that's really important. Um, and, and these 100%. concepts, I think, I think they need to understand what you're talking about. <sighs> that's awesome, dude. Wow. This is really, this is really cool. Thanks, man. What is your, what is your end goal? Or one of your end goals? Um, it's a tough question. I've, I've thought about that because like every night, like I'll write down my affirmations because then like, you know, being vulnerable with the audience where it's like, you know, at least for me, when I watch, you know, some of these Instagram reels or like I read about, you know, how to think like a champion or Angela Duckworth or Tim Grover. And I'm just like, well, like, do they ever have off moments or do they ever feel down? And I'm just like, geez, like, that'd be nice where it's like, I have to do my affirmations every night because sometimes I am down or sometimes I'm like, well, I should be further or, you know, that 2021 year eats me or, you know, yada, yada, yada. And it's just like my end goal is I just want to be able to, I think my end goal, like to be able to articulate into words is to be able to, whether it's like a Sunday or a Monday or whatever it is, be able to just like sit down with my family, like, my wife and hopefully we have four or five, you know, healthy, strong kids and we can just be able to have love and get along and get together. And so it's just like, I always like here in Utah culture, there's, you know, there's a ton of LDS families and in a lot of family rooms, there's always like some hobby lobby sign that says like gather. And like, I'll always joke about it. <laughs> I'm just like, Oh, where's your gather sign. But like, honestly, like that, that's what I want where it's like, I look at some of like my mentor families and I'm just like, holy cow, like those guys just went to Hawaii for a week together and just had the time of their lives, like all six of them. Or it's like one of my best buddies, it's Christian Davis. Like he's a twin, he has a younger brother and then has a younger sister. And his dad was uh, a mission president in Sweden. And his wife is, you know, his uh, Christian's mom is an angel. And like, they're literally like the LDS Brady Bunch. And like, I look at that family, I'm like, if I could even be like remotely close to that, like I would be so stoked. So I think that's one of my end goals. I want to be a good dad. Like I love my dad and I love my parents, but they're really hard on me where it's just like, I view them as more kind of like the classic, like 1960s. Like those are my parents. Like, yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Where it's like, I'd love to be friends with my kids, but also have that respect. And then I think number three is like, it's a big goal, but like I want to be a billionaire with a B because I want to run, you know, a lot of charities. I want to run a lot of nonprofits. Um, my little brother actually passed away to suicide. And so you know, my parents and I, like, we give away a scholarship every year at the, the high school he went to. It's, it's not much, but, like, you know, we do a scholarship every year. So any type of study or research or walk I can do in suicide prevention. So that's why I want to make as much money as I can to make as much impact as I can and to give back to as, as many as I can. Because I love that feeling. Like, my technician for, for pest control, like, we raised a little bit of money and, you know, we, we gave him some cash to go out and buy a car because – you know, he, he doesn't have anything. So like, I, I love that feeling and, you know, seeing his smile. So I think those are some of my end goals. Love that. You got me tearing up over here, bro. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, yeah, dude, you're, you're, you will, you will get there. Um, just know that it is going to be very, very hard. Yeah. Um, you're you as a leader, you can bear the weight. You're built to hold the weight and handle the weight. Um, you know, when you break, you don't worry, you'll be able to get right back up. Um, yep. there, there is no, there is no broken, uh, you just continue to figure out how to get back up and keep going. It will happen. Um, you're one of the few that I know that wants to be a billionaire. I'm one of them as well. That's awesome. I'm glad that you're, uh, that you're on that track. Cause I think the new millionaire is a new brokenness. Unfortunately, like, uh, <laughs> I, I always tell people, I'm like, dude, you got to invest like a billionaire, not like a millionaire because millionaires still live paycheck to paycheck. I know yep. a lot of them, uh, yep. nothing against them. I'm just saying it's like, you know, billionaires, I don't ever see living paycheck to paycheck other than Elon Musk, I suppose. Every once in a while, before before he was, uh, uh, he was a billionaire at that point when he was asking people for rent money. Yeah. Anyways, so okay, this is awesome. Let me let me transition and try to close out here. Um, where where what what would be what would be your final words? Like, what would be your one tip of advice for the other Golden Door Award winners? 
Yeah, honestly, we, we've talked a lot about life, which has been really good. But I think bringing it back into more narrow-minded, into especially sales and achieving that golden door where it's like 200K to 700K or 300K to 700K or I can't believe it's a thing. Like we've had some guys switch over where like they literally had done, you know, back when it was 650K, they had done 550K and the company didn't do everything in their mind to push them to it where it's like that doesn't make sense to me. But what I'm getting at is – to make those leaps, it's not like you have to be some crazy wizard and know the ins and outs of Terminex or know the ins and outs of these other door-to-door companies. It's just literally work hard, do your job, and always do the right thing. And so when it's like you're working hard, it's like be smart about it. Where it's literally if you keep messing up on switchovers, we'll go to whoever is at the company or in your office that's the best at the switchovers and train with them until you're better than them. Or, you know, if you hate do-it-yourselfers and, you know, you're in the Midwest selling and you can't sell do-it-yourself or where it's like, you know, sorry, Timmy, like that's going to be half your sale. So, like, you got you to gotta get on your horse and, and figure out how to do that. And then I would say kind of wrapping up that thought, it's just like, again, having the self-awareness because especially like I was being raw with you guys where it's like in 2021, like that was a tough pill for me to swallow that I wasn't going to go to law school anymore and I was – 2021 you know i was i was 28 years old where it's just like the sooner you guys can figure out how to be more self-aware especially as a male and be vulnerable especially with your loved one and with yourself you will be light years ahead of the pack you will be absolutely light years ahead of the pack if you can be self-aware if you can be vulnerable because then that first part of being able to take you know constructive criticism or improving those making those improvements to strengths that'll make it that much easier And then, you know, the third thing, I'm a big, huge mental health advocate. It's just like I talk about it with all my guys before every summer and especially in door to door is make sure to check your check engine light where it's like if you're driving a nice car and you see oil change, like at least for me, like as soon as I see anything on my dashboard because I'm so type A, I hate it. Like I want to get it fixed right away. But as human beings, like we wait or we suppress it or we go to drugs and alcohol or we overeat or whatever your vice is, but it's like it's okay if it's appropriate to go seek counseling. It's okay to, you know, cry to someone or it's okay to be real with someone where it's like, you know, I see a counselor once a month because we go through so much with door to door. I'm very fast paced and intense. And, you know, I've gone through so much in my life where it's just like, I need to have that non-biased third party that can just be like, Hey Cody, like you're okay. Or Hey Cody, actually you are messing up there. So kind of not getting all over the place, but it's like be able to be, you know, self-aware and self-vulnerable with yourself. So that way you can make those improvements I was talking about. It'll make working harder that much more efficient. There's the thumbs up again. It'll make working harder that much more efficient. And then especially you can take care of yourself where it's like, we kind of have this joke here at the grit where it's just like, all right, we're going to go to war this summer where it's like, the last two summers, it doesn't have to be where it's just like, I usually feel fatigue around July. So it's like, you know what? I'm going to get an IV in May and June. So that way I don't feel so tired in July. Or do you know what? Like I, I start my morning off so bad and I have so much tension in my head because it's like, I look at my phone as soon as I wake up and you know, Timmy is sick. Tommy doesn't want to knock because he's afraid of the cops. And you know, we got a one-star review on Google because we're, you know, we're too aggressive on the doors, but it's like, so then it's like, okay, I'm not going to look at my phone until after I have my morning workout in. So that way I have an hour when I wake up to have clear thoughts and good thoughts. And those are just a few examples. But again, guys, it's just like, I am so passionate about this. And it's just like, be able to have the humility to look at to whatever you need to improve to make it a strength, be able to be self aware. So then that way you can just grow as an individual, a human being, a spouse, a son, you name it. And then actually make those corrections, whether it's health, fitness, or mental. So that way the summer is enjoyable. Because if you actually step back, yeah, the rejection sucks. But we get to be outside every day. We literally get to make thousands of dollars every day. And we get to have cool, like some of the coolest conversations I've ever had in the last 20 years have been with people that I met on the door. So I think having that perspective shift, instead of making it war, it's just like, I'm just going to go do my job and be really good at it. I love that, dude, brother. It's been a uh, it's been a great time, Cody Olive. Man, you're a, you are definitely a stud. Uh, Thanks, I man. really appreciate that, man. Um, where can we? Uh, I want everyone to to be able to follow you, um, follow your journey. Where can we? Uh, where can we find you on social media? So I'm on Instagram, Cody underscore underscore 
underscore olive, O-L-I-V as in Victor E. And then I'm pretty active on LinkedIn too. And same thing, just Cody Olive. Awesome, brother. Awesome, man. Well, dude, I appreciate your time. Uh, look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks at Door Orcon. And uh, dude, thank you, brother. I appreciate you, man. Of course. Thanks, Mikey. Thanks for having me on. Of course, brother. God bless, man. Merry Christmas. See you guys.